editing Sam here. I'm in some co-work in Valencia, but just to let you know, this started out as a kind of a discovery of the fetch tool, but actually it's kind of transformed into a pretty useful tutorial on how to get Airtable working with the fetch feature inside of Framer. So with that in mind, you need to use Cloudflare workers to get your own custom API working. This is how I understand that anyway, but let me know if you know otherwise, but yeah, just bear that in mind that to get to use your own data, you need kind of a middle Cloudflare workers to get this all working. I kind of forget to explain that in the episode. Anyway, on with the episode. Brightman have just released a exciting new feature called Fetch. And this means we can go get data from a third party API and bring it into our project and show that data. It's a really, really exciting new feature. I have some questions that I raised over on Twitter that I want to just test out in this episode. I'll give you a quick demo of how it works as well, but let's dig into whether it, it can be useful for other things other than just fetching bit of data let's dive in right i'm gonna be honest i don't know how uh workers work I've, this is all kind of new to me but the beauty of knowing code knowing node you can kind of figure this stuff out so i've just jumped in and i'm gonna get something working because this this all looks very familiar to me but let's just break down the code that they have right now um basically what this is doing is creating just a a url that's manageable within node so if you call this URL, it's then passing that URL onwards, if that makes sense, or at least the object. So it's creating a URL and then it's showing you what that URL is. And if I remember rightly, we should get, there we go. So it's calling the root path and it's passing that on. And you've got navigator user URL, uh, navigator user agent there. So you've got hello Cloudflare workers, just some stuff to get you going on. And then it's doing, it's returning a response. If there's a slash API and doing some, it's importing some data on the fly uh, and then repu um, returning it. Or if it's not an API, it's just returning that data, which is what you're basically seeing here. That's how I understand it. Let's get something working where this is going to be more something that you're going to do. What I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to delete all this and I'm going to paste here just my bearer token. Um, I'll put it off the screen so you don't see it because it's actually being used for something here. Now, if you didn't see my last video on Web Studio, I built X New World's website and uh, we used Airtable as a CMS. Probably something you're going to do as well. So let's get some something like that working. Um, and yeah. Got some code off screen here so i'm just uh, lighting that up so let's paste this in and let you know what's going on so this is the same url if we go into my web studio project which i've got open here it's the same url this is calling this database and we've got show and hide here which is the images that x new worlds wants to show on their home page so uh this is filtering that go down here so i'm fetching uh, that URL and I'm setting the authorization bearer token to this token that I've copied and pasted in just uh, as plain text. Now we need to, and it's always good to wrap this in a try catch um, just so we can better handle errors. Uh, catch E, that's fine. And then we can probably actually let's do this, paste this dummy response in and I'm going to probably do something like json dot string if I and then just go um, um, error e whatever so I'm returning the error that gets passed into the catch okay um, I don't know if that works. This is not the point of the um, episode, just sort of showing you good habits along the way. So we've got this response and we need to actually get the data from that response. So if I just paste in my data, if I console log that data, let all this load up, you'll see that my records are being sent through, which is amazing. Now we can do one of two things and I'm gonna practice both. We could, uh, go record ooh, records and then if we go down here let that load it's just the array okay we're not we're ignoring um, any of this or this other stuff there's not really anything to it but we could clean up the data depending on what you fetched or all the rest of it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to test what it's like when just data is passed 
and we want to we want to return that data and then we're going to return it as a thing and you can see here it's it's uh well we can see that object it's being returned so this is pretty much it this is what you expect from a sort of api so now i'm going to um deploy that i'm, I'm figuring this out on the fly by the way guys uh to log in Hopefully that worker is set up, everything's good. Uh, let's do framer, let's do that. Deploy that. Now we should get a URL here. Okay, so that is the URL, let's give that a go. If I click on any bit of text, we can go content and then add fetch. And then we should be able to just paste in that URL. Now the path here, Failed to fetch. Okay, what I found was basically we need to include these headers here um, and I removed the uh, content type just because I think browsers assume content type nowadays so you don't need to specify it. And I've just cleaned up the object a little bit to say status 200 with uh, data here. Issue is now, because I've obviously gone ahead of time. So we're seeing this error here. If we go in here, we got our um, URL, which is fine. We can select the endpoint and then this loads and then we can suddenly see all our data um i know this is all dummy data we go like that we're still we're seeing that error but when i publish it and go through to here you can see the original text and then the data loads which signifies to me that this is post loading fetch which it's oh you know it's not terrible but this doesn't mean we're now that we can have say separate cms's for things data that needs to be uh, available on page load for seo or accessibility reasons needs to be ready on page load but this is a fetch that's happening afterwards and we can just confirm that by just going to here and then you can see that fetch that's happening we wouldn't see that if it's loading uh, before the page loads which is something uh, web studio do which is something toddle do this is in the right direction, but I want this stuff to happen before the page loads, unfortunately. Still a great feature, but just be very, very mindful of what you're using it for. Um, and that it's not, it's not necessarily content, but it's more so widgets, as they describe in the demonstration. So there you go, fetch in frame, and not quite what I was after. Very, very welcome, but just bear in mind that it's not great for SEO reasons or the rest of it. Anyway, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, happy no coding. Oh, and YouTube thinks you'll like this one, but I think you'll like that one, so check these guys out. Anyway, see you in the next one.